Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're on part 6 of this Italian Greyhound and we're going to start working our way down his neck. Um, we're just going to see how much we get done. My plan today is for the neck um, and then the next part will be uh, part of his shoulders and chest but we'll just see how far we can get today. Now the neck is quite dark so obviously for the head we've been starting off with one grey one as our base layer. For this neck we're actually going to be using one grey two as our base layer because we're going to be going quite dark in areas with it um, and the highlights are probably going to be back in with the one grey three so I'm going to make it a bit easier for us all and use one grey two as our base layer. So uh, let's just get started on this neck. I'm also going to be starting from the left hand side of the neck and working down this side and then coming back over into the dark section. Again, obviously we do have shadows under his chin and the likes, um, but we're going to work from left to right across his neck, um, which will make it a little easier for us to see our tones and values. And then if we need to darken anything like we've done previously, we'll go back and darken it. So I've got my warm grey two and I'm just going to come in from the head and I'm going to start building up this base layer. Now I am going to start making sure that I follow the fur direction just to make it easier on myself later on as well. And we'll just build it up section by section again. Now I really like adding a neck to a piece because before we had a bit of a floating head going on. Now we're going to start adding this head in and it's just going to really ground the picture nicely. Right, so I'm going to start off with this little section first on the um, on this guy. So I'm going to take my copper first. And I'm just going to start again using the copper and the copper is just going to sort of add some fur direction but also give us that like brownish grey tone. And again I'm making sure I'm following this fur direction going right up to the head. We don't want a little halo, a white halo around the head, we want it all to look like it's connected. It's the same dog. We just obviously worked with it in different sections. Okay, so oh, oh. that's going to happen quite a bit, isn't it? I'm then coming in with my nugget just along this edge here where it's going to start curving round. Now we're making sure we're following the curves of this neck because we want that neck to look rounded and 3D. So we start following that third direction early on. We've already started creating the effect that's going on with this neck. Oops. Let me just get that focused, sorry. Um, and then we're going to take the one grey three over the top of the nugget and one grey two. So I'm going over this and into that corner. So the fur comes straight down from that corner. But then as we come down here, it starts curving and it's cur oh, curving round here. Just going over some of this, blending it into that little line. I don't want that, that white line. So sometimes when we're drawing dogs and we're connecting the head to the neck, we tend to not feel brave enough to go right up to that line. Go right up to that line. We want we don't want that little white halo around the neck. 
Okay, and then I'm just going to go back to that copper. And it's just going to darken this up ever so slightly. So, I've then got the gold, and I'm just going to run this gold along this neck. And then take the one grey two over the top of all of this. Okay, so you can see now we're really starting to get this neck in. And it's also highlighting to me that we probably need to darken this cheek up a little bit, but we'll do that afterwards. So I'm coming in again with the um, one grey two. And I'm making sure that I'm following this fur direction. So the fur on this neck here is changing directions quite a lot. So you really need to be aware of that. So you can see that it's curving here, but then it's sort of coming down here and then downwards. So as you're doing this base layer, really keep looking back at your reference photo. Really capture this change in fur direction. And it's capturing these changes in fur direction that's really going to help you make your piece look more realistic. Um, which obviously if you're after realism is the look that you want. I'm just going to bring this down here. Okay, that's a nice section to work with and we're going to get some really nice dark tones in here now. Okay, so I'm going to come in first with my walnut brown and I'm going to add it underneath. Oops. Underneath his cheek here. Again, making sure I'm focusing on that fur direction because it does change quite a lot on this neck. And this is just going into those shadowed areas. So it's not going to cover all of the neck. Just going to get some of this shadow in. I think this tutorial has been a nice better length for everybody to follow. Maybe I will have to alternate between like a really long <laughs> tutorial and short one. And I'm bringing this um, walnut brown just along this edge where this fur is kind of meeting. Just to, that'll help us darken it up. Okay. I'm then going to take Payne's Grey. Um, now I'm going to use the Payne's Grey but I'm not going to press very hard. Um, I don't want to go, again, don't want to go too dark too soon. And this is going to just start bringing in some of these shadow tones, following that fur direction again. And I'm going to bring this underneath the chin. Over that walnut brown, uh, underneath the cheek, sorry, we're not under the chin. <laughs> And bring that down here. And I'm just going to blend it out a little bit. There, yeah, I quite like this Payne's Grey. It's going to be quite a nice colour for our shadows for this guy. And again, just up this neck. Okay. Um, and then I am going to take my, I'm going to take my Van Dyke Brown first. Um, 
again just another brownish tone just to go in this fur and I'm just going to place this again following that fur direction You see we're going quite dark under this neck, we're changing colours, hang on. And going round here. Okay. And then over that with the burnt umber. Now I know this is a lot of browns at the moment, but we're just kind of mixing these brown tones to create a colour that we want. And this is like the colour that's just going to shine through the greys. Um, okay, happy with that. Then I'm going to go over the top with the warm grey too. Not pressing hard, we don't want this to be super burnished so we can't work on top of it, we want to be able to work on top. I'm then just going to go back over with the paints grey. Pressing a little bit harder now just to darken these shadows. Especially in this corner, I feel like this bit needs to be a bit darker. Following that fur direction. And I'm just going to darken up in here. And down here. Okay, and then take my uh, warm grey five. Over the top. And now we'll get all those brown tones showing through. Just gonna give a really nice colour to this fur and the neck. Um, and then back to my warm grey free, and I'm just gonna darken this a little bit up now. Um, and then one grey two, harder pressure along this side just to help blend it in. So all I've done is, I think my hand was in the way and we're not focused. There we go. So all I did was I blended this section where we've just gone over with a warm grey three, harder pressure with a warm grey two and just blended um, all of that in together. Just going to take that warm grey two again come down the neck once more again I'm following fur direction so it's sort of coming straight here and then we're going to curve again so we've got like a straight line and it's curving again with the base layer we are going to going over the top it just kind of helps you to study the reference photo in that fur direction if you do it with your base layers it's not a necessity just something that I find helpful. Um, and then using the gold. And again, this gold is just kind of like we do with the copper, just helps to map in the fur. And that fur direction. Oops, sorry. I realise it keeps going in and out of focus. Um, may have to zoom you in so that it stays in focus. I'll try and stop putting my hand in the way. That, that's the issue. And then bring that down this neck here. Okay. Right, 
so let's go in again with the burnt umber um and i'm doing it oh sorry there we go curving up this neck this way so we have this section where the fur is meeting from this side of the neck and here so we've just got to be aware of that and i'm just following the fur direction again with this burnt umber Um, I'm then going to take the, um, I want the warm grey 5, I just need to find my warm grey 5, warm grey 5, over where we've put that burnt umber. And into this neck and in this neck we're going to go in with the warm grey three and that'll help us blend all this together and I want to bring it down to this neck that warm grey five okay um, and then like I said the warm grey three into part of that neck here and it's a bit darker on that edge so I'm just going to use a little bit of one grey free on this edge going over some of that darker patch and up into this neck and then just over all that that we've just drawn in And then use that warm grey two across the whole of this neck, following the fur direction, just to help with this blending. And that'll just help smooth out this neck. So this neck is kind of out of focus, it's not as detailed. So we're just going to come in with this warm grey two, and that'll just help smooth out those details. Uh, taking my dark sepia now, and I'm going over where I've got that Payne's grey. And this is just going to darken up again, ever so slightly. Creating that little bits of fur. And along this neck. So you can see we're just starting to really darken it up. Adding in these little details and just creating the look on this neck that we want. It's also looking less like a floating head now. <laughs> um, I'm going to take my copper and I'm going to use my copper along just along here just to use this copper just to darken this part of the neck up ever so slightly. And that'll just help us create this look that this is the neck. Like so. Okay, that's a lot better. Just along here as well. Okay, yeah, I'm a lot happy with that. Um, I've got the one grey five just along here. So I'm kind of darkening up the neck how I want it to look now. Just that little bit darker along here. Like so. Okay, I'm happy with that. So, um, back to the one grey two as a base layer. Um, and I'm just going to work out what's best. I think, yeah, we'll come down this neck and we'll do the neck to about here. So I'm just again following that fur direction. So that fur is coming down here and it's curving here. Okay. And again. 
just in here following the flow direction so that's coming to about here and then it's straightening up here so i'm just going to add this section in so that i can use it as a reference point i've used it with the mouth um, to reference how, where the fur is changing directions and then I can use it to help us with the position that we are on the neck. So this is all the one grey two. And you can see by doing the one grey two as a base layer, it's given us some natural highlights already. Oh, I've got a bit of paper going there. Um, got some natural highlights and we've not had to use um, the one grey one, then followed by the one grey two to darken it. Now taking the nugget. And again, following that third direction, and I'm using the nugget for the brown undertones here. And then taking the one grey five over, so I'm going to take it over the top of this nugget. Now you can see I've got a little bit of a white glow here, so we need to sort that out, but that's going to have some dark fur. So I'm going to take the one grey five up to there and then we can darken it. But that's what I mean by that little halo of white you don't want. Now we do have a, a highlight on the fur itself, so I'm not worried about that. I just want the um, neck to go as close to that head as we can get it. You can see that highlight that comes down here is going into that little bit of muzzle. That's fine. We just didn't want that bigger um, glow around the neck. Um, I'm then going to take my Payne's Grey along here just darkening into here okay um, and then the warm grey too me actually I'm gonna go back over this with the one grey five. I want this to be a bit darker in grey. It's not as dark a grey as I'd like. So I'm going over the whole of the neck that I've got here. So yeah I'm happy with that now. Okay, um, and then I'm taking the dark sepia, where we've got this dark fur. Here. And just little short lines, just to differentiate that little bit of muzzle. And then I'll take the one grey two. Over the top, like so. Okay, right. I've just got the cold grey two, and I'm just gonna run the cold grey two over this edge because we're gonna start bringing in some bluer tones. So I just want to start giving that hint that we're gonna have some blue tones. And then I've got, <clears throat> excuse me, the dark sepia, and I'm just very lightly adding in some little fur lines to create some detail. Very, very lightly with a dark sepia. Okay, right. We're then coming um, back to this side of the neck. So I've got my Van Dyke brown. And again, following that fur direction, following the curvature of this neck. And I'm just using the... Um, Van Dyke Brown and then I'm going to get the nugget along here as well um, and then the 
on grade five. Medium pressure with a warm grade five. Give it to be fairly dark. And again, making sure that I'm following that fur direction. Okay, um, then the paint's grey. Along here. And then back to the dark sepia. And again, I'm just making sure that I'm drawing some fur lines. So we can see the, sh um, the direction that this fur is going in and also that the fur is short so we're using short pencil strokes it's giving that effect of really short fine fur um, and then back to um, I'm going to use one grey free first because we're getting darker on this bit of neck just make sure that blends outwards And then back in with the one grey two, and let's just smooth this out. Like so. Okay, so we're getting there, we're getting a neck coming in now. So back to the one grey two, and I'm going to start bringing this underneath. The muzzle. So again, focusing on hair direction, fur direction. Going right up to that chin. Now this part of the neck is going to be a lot darker, so that chin will really start looking like it's sitting in front of and above this neck um, I'm just sort of mapping in this dark patch the shadow that I can see and I'm mapping in that darkest part because I can blend out into the lighter areas afterwards um, yeah let's just I'm going to map in this side of the neck as well we'll do all this as a section so all of this has been just mapped in with this warm grey too at the moment, following the fur. I know it looks quite like an overwhelming section to draw, but we're going to break it down as we do. We'll just break it down into little areas. Okay, so I am going to take my um, walnut brown under here and again following the fur direction right up into that chin, creating those little lines. And I'm going to go over this one grey two area.
this is still all with the walnut brown just mapping it all in okay um, I'm then going to take the Payne's Grey, which I seem to have misplaced, it's here, um, in this corner. And I'm just going to really start to darken this bit up a little bit with the Payne's Grey. Creating that effect of the muzzle hair overlapping and just bringing a little bit of this Payne's Grey down into here to help with the blending. See how I'm creating those little white fur lines. So I'm just kind of like pushing the darker colours into the lighter area to create that look that we've just drawn up and under the fur. And that was with the Payne's Grey. Then got the dark sepia, and again, I'm just going to go over this whole dark shadow now with the dark sepia. Keeping that fur direction in mind at all times. And knowing that this is going to be a shadow underneath his neck. Now again, I'm pressing lightly because this obviously needs to go a lot darker. But I'd rather start off light and just map it all in slowly. Oops. And then darken after. Remember, you can always go darker, but going lighter can be very difficult. Okay, so it's going to look weird. I'm just going to leave this here for a minute and just get that warm grey too. And just map in some of this neck fur so that I, I can judge just how dark I need to go with the... Um, whether I need to take this shadow to black um, or whether we can just use the dark sepia to really darken it. So I'm just going to map in the base layer here. And along this neck. And I'm just going to take that over that Payne's Grey. Just to help soften this neck bit there. Okay. And then just get this base layer in. Well, he no longer has a floating head. <laughs> okay, so I am going to take the Burnt Umber this time. Um, and applied that over the top of the one grey two. Again, following the fur direction, sharp pencil strokes. I really enjoyed this piece, I have to say, so I hope you all have. I think as well, because I've drawn this on a smaller size um, compared to the Border Collie, the parts haven't been as long because obviously it has been smaller in size to draw. Um, this is the one grey 5. So I think I'm going to try and stick to keeping my pieces all at um, a 4 size, which is about a 9x12, 10x12 size. Uh, that's inches. And then hopefully the parts won't be as long, <laughs> um, or there won't be as many parts. 
but as you can probably tell I like to take my time and I like to go into detail um, and I think as well explaining it to you guys like it's slowing me down a little bit because I'm really having to think through each process and explain it to you all uh, which isn't a bad thing don't don't get me wrong I I'm really enjoying doing these tutorials for you all um, and it's nice to have to slow down and really think about like what why are you picking gold why are you picking copper and trying to explain it I know I don't always explain it and I just say the colours but <laughs> okay so this is the warm grey five again just going back over doing about two layers of the warm grey five and now you can see that we really need to darken that shadow up but by getting this bit patch of fur in to a colour that I'm happy with I'll now go back in with the dark sepia in this shadow Darken it up. So I'll use a bit more pressure now. Blend into that one grey five. And it's just going to be a matter of darkening up now. Just kind of... And again, I've made sure I've followed that fur direction. So, um, and then I'm going to go back over with the warm grey five just to help with that blending, and I'm going to go over that shadow. And I'm going to take the warm grey five around this neck as well. Okay, um, and then I'm going to take the one grey three just to help with the smoothing out. I don't want to use one grey two because it might lighten it a little too much. So the one grey three is going to work quite nicely. Just along this edge here. Okay, and then back to the Payne's grey. I'm just going to. Okay, I'm actually going to take my black very lightly. I'm not going to press very hard. Just under here, into this corner. And very lightly blend it outwards. And again, just over the shadow. Very lightly. Under here and this is just light pressure I'm not pressing hard 
give them a slight pressure. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to take that burnt umber. Just glaze it over this little middle section a little bit more. Okay, right. Um, we're getting there. We're slowly getting this next. I feel like we may need to do a bit more blending and layers, but we'll have a look as we start moving down. So we are back to the base layer of grey in um, this section of the neck this time. I'm trying to make sure my hand doesn't get too much in the way because it's my hand that's changing the lighting and the focus. <laughs> um, and we've got this like dark patch of fur coming in here. That's really curving downwards there. Okay, and then um, I've got the nugget now, and I'm just following the darker grey tones, and I'm going to use the nugget for them. Oh, hiccup, sorry. Again, following that fur direction and remembering, oh gosh, sorry, I've got the hiccups, <laughs> that the fur is changing directions all the time. So we're keeping an eye on the fur direction and what direction it's going in. What a time to get hiccups while you're filming. <laughs> sorry, I realised my hand was in the way. Let me just refocus you, sorry about that. So much to remember when you're filming. <laughs> it's not as simple as just getting the camera out and recording. As much as I would like it to be that simple. Okay, so just using that nugget to map in the fur direction, but also this brown undertone that we're going to have. Um, I'm then going to take the gold and I'm going to use the gold on this section which is a bit more of a highlighted area um, to again map in fur direction. I'm just constantly looking back at this reference photo. And just mapping in the direction that the fur is going. Okay. I'm going to take my warm grey 4 and I'm just going to sharpen it and I'm going to take the warm grey 4 go over all of this section with the warm grey 4 and I'm leaving a little highlighted area here so I guess it's not all of the section um, majority of the section with the warm grey for and then I'm leaving a little highlighted area which we're going to use the what probably the warm grey free but 
probably start with the warm grey two and build up to the warm grey three. We'll see. And again, just following all the all the time, following that fur direction. Just gotta keep making sure I'm not getting my hand too much in the way. Start from the top and then I can move it. Getting a nice tone of grey here now. You see, I might need to darken this um, muzzle up a little bit as well. I think any areas that I need to darken up, I'll do at the very end. Um, we'll get the rest of his neck and chest in. Um, and then any areas that we need to darken, we can do like finishing touches um, part. Okay, so I'm going to take my core grey 2 first and I'm going to use this core grey 2 in this what's like the highlight of the fur it's a bit of a shine going on here so that'll give us a nice bluish tone to work with um, and then I'm going to take the I think I am going to go in with the warm grey 3 um, and add in fur direction again with the warm grey free. And that blends into that darker there area there. So I can see that I do need to darken here again. Um, I'm going to come in with the cold grey 5, uh, no, cold grey 4. Um, the cold grey 4. So I'm going to take my cold grey 4 and I'm going to go over this section with this cold grey 4. Nice sharp pencil. I can't believe that we've nearly done two full tutorials together. I'm also debating, I know I said before I was looking at doing a spaniel. Um, and I was talking to somebody who's been following a tutorial and a friend of mine um, who um, doesn't follow tutorials but um, supports me regardless um, about possibly doing a white, pure white dog, so like a white husky or a samoyed um, and we'll do a white dog on white paper. So I'm debating which one to do next because I, I love doing white fur. <laughs> but I think I did say I would do the spaniel next. So I think it will be the spaniel. Um, which will also be a different type of fur to draw. I've got a feeling the spaniel will be a fairly long tutorial. Like the ears will probably be a tutorial each. Um, but we'll see. kind of want to get the ears done on a spaniel first. But... Do the irons and then the ears maybe on the spaniel. Okay, so I've got a nice blend here now. So sometimes it's just about constantly getting that blend right. 
Um, and then going in with a warm grey tail over the top of that, just to help with that blend again. Um, and just blend into that little bit of blue there as well. Okay, uh, back to my dark sepia and I'm just going to darken here and this bit's sort of going that way. So it's constantly making sure that we've got this fur going in the correct direction. And again, I'm just darkening this little bit of the neck up ever so slightly. Like so. Okay, I also think I want to darken um, along here, so I'm going to use the dark sepia. And there's some darker bits of fur, so I'm gonna um, just going to sharpen it. With a sharp pencil, you'll be able to get some more details in, so we're just going to sharpen the dark sepia and get some more detail in. So the dark sepia, following that fur direction still. You can see just by having a sharp pencil, I'm not pressing hard, but I'm getting some nice detail. Um, and again in here. It's a bit of back and forth on this neck, just to make sure we've got it dark enough in areas. Um, and then I've got the gold, I'm just going to do the gold up along this side of the neck. Sorry, make sure my hand doesn't change the lighting too much. And then the dark, uh, warm grey too, I don't know why I say dark grey, warm grey too, <laughs> just to help blend some of these areas. And especially down here. Like so, okay. Um, I'm going to take the Pearl Grey 4 very lightly just to create some detail in this darker, uh, in this word, lighter area. I think I wanted to say darker because that's essentially what we're doing. We're darkening up some details. But <laughs> just get. Just got to keep you on your toes. Right, let's move a little bit further down the neck now. So I've just moved the camera down ever so slightly. Um, and I'm just going to come in here again with the warm grey one base layer. And I think we're going to come to about here with the base layer. Um, and come about this far down for this part of the tutorial. And then we can just do the shoulders and the chest. Um, for the final part before we do like the details. I hope you've all enjoyed this so far. I know I keep saying it, but I do hope you have. <laughs> okay. So again, with the gold, following the fur direction, especially down the side of this neck. And I'm going to bring that gold all the way down here. So the copper has more of like a brownish grey tone. And this is more of a, just like a grey I don't know how to explain the tonal value of this gold, but it's more of a greyish rather than a copperish, brownish grey. Um, I'm actually going to bring this gold across the whole uh, of this section, I think. Just going to map in all this fur, following that fur direction all the time. This will give us a nice undertonal value. Oh, sorry, my hand is in the way again, isn't it? Oh, 
I will learn. One of these days we'll have a tutorial without a hitch. <laughs> What have you guys thought about this tutorial with it not being as many colours? Um, I've tried to limit the amount of colours, but it's just mainly greys and browns. Has it been helpful? Right, so we've got gold across all of there now. So I've got my burnt umber and I'm just going to add some of this brown tone. Again, as always, oh sorry focus following that third direction the Von Dyke Brown just lightly and over some of this burnt uh, burnt umber especially in this like corner here um, and then we will take the one grey five and I'm going to go over all of this for not pressing too hard but just hard enough to create a bit of definition with this um, one grey five a bit of a darker grey tone Trying to keep it in focus for you guys. Or at least so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, and then we'll take the one grey two and I'm just going to go over everything. We've got a medium pressure just to help blend. And then I'm going to grab the dark sepia. And again, using this dark sepia with a sharp point to create some detail. Um, I'm going to grab the one grey three just for the darker detail on this side of the neck. some extra little fur lines along here okay let's have a look okay so we just need um oh my dark sepia And 
the warm grey five again just here oops sorry there you go it's hard and I'm trying to work around the camera as well it's uh, trying to work my hand so that my hand isn't around where the camera's facing um okay yeah we're happy with that little section so let's um get this little section in and then I will finish the tutorial there so I'm going to apply the base layer across all of this Again, making sure I follow that third direction. Oops, my hand's getting in the way again, isn't it? Really sorry about this one. I feel like most of it's been quite blurry. Um, actually, most of this fur is kind of going in this direction, so I'm just going to keep this base layer kind of in that direction come up here right um and then i'm going to use the cold gray 2 here again we've got a bit of a highlight coming in there so i'm just going to use it um in this little section and then over the top of this cold gray I'm going to use the gold. Following that fur direction again. Sorry if you can hear me drinking, I'm trying to do it away from the um, camera. Okay, and then I'm grabbing the nugget. to use um cold gray five here bring that cold gray five down like that um and then i am going to take the warm gray four oops i'm knocking everything over now so i can see i definitely need to add some more shadows i need to build that contrast up we're looking a bit mid-tony but that's fine this is the warm gray four going over some of that tonal value there and then i'm going to take that warm gray two with a bit of a harder pressure now and just really help smooth all this out. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to come in with my um, dark sepia um, and I'm going to just build up some of these darker tones. Oops. So I'm just a bit of a harder pressure just building up some of these darker tones on this side of the neck. And then I'm going to grab the burnt umber and I'm going to use the burnt umber to create some as well. Especially in this like corner of the neck. Okay, that looks better. Right, let's keep going. Um, so back in with the um, nugget coming down this neck. Um, and I'm going to use Cold Grey 5. Um, over the top of that nugget that we've just added. And that's sort of coming over here a bit more as well with this cold grey five. Okay, um, and then I'm going to use the warm grey free. And again, just following that fur direction. Up the side of the neck. Getting there now. I think we part of this neck we will um, change tonal values so add some shadows when we start adding in this chest um, for the final parts. Okay um, and then the cold grey five again. Got a nice shadow coming up here. And again, just darkening, re-darkening areas that just need to go that little bit darker. So I hope this tutorial has kind of shown you that even though we're doing a grey, what is essentially a grey dog, there's some nice undertones under there. So you, we've, we've mainly used brown undertones, but you could get some pinks in. Try to keep this one a little bit simple. I don't. I didn't want to go too overboard with colours. But you could use a lot of colours. You could use your light flesh and your cinnamon. Your light red violet would work nicely in this dog. Your sepia 50 and 10 from the luminance would work nicely as well if you um, had luminance pencils. Okay, um, and then I'm going to take the warm grey free back over this little section here. This might be a little too dark, so light light pressure. Um, back to the cold grey five. I'm going to actually darken here. And along here. And then get the warm grey two over the top just to help smooth. This 
necessary though. Oh yeah. Okay, I think I'm quite happy to leave this here. Now I do want to darken some more of this neck up, but um we've already done quite a lot of this today. Um let me zoom you out and I'll show you the piece. So here we are with the piece at the moment. I'm actually quite happy with this neck. We do need a little more detail here. Um, you can kind of see it's just a little out of focus. So I want a little bit more detail in here just to show that this part of the neck is in focus. Um, and a little bit darker under this sort of neck. Um, but I'm happy to leave this neck where we are and to darken that up on the next part once we've done the rest of the neck and chest. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial so far. This is another part finished. We've done the neck and I will see you in the next part where we will finish this Italian Greyhound. Any comments let me know. If you haven't subscribed already please do and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye everybody.